Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Akib, and in this video, we are going to take a look at how to deploy an Express.js application on Netlify. When we create a server using Express.js or Node.js, it is really important to deploy it so that those resources, those API endpoints, can then be targeted by a live React application and we can put them all together. If you're wondering how to deploy a React application, I have another video on that as well. I'll link it in the description box below. But in this one, let us focus on deploying an Express.js application. All right, so I have netlify.com open right here. Now, if we spend a few minutes actually researching or looking at the documentation, there is a detailed guide on this already available on Netlify. Even though this guide does not solve the problem entirely for us, but it gives us a good reference point. So we'll refer to this guide. There are a couple of code snippets and instructions that are important. And then we'll go ahead and deploy our Express application accordingly. So the very first thing that we have to know here is that unlike a React project, which should ideally be deployed from GitHub, in the case of an Express application, we don't actually have to make a GitHub repository. You can follow that approach as well. I've already covered that approach in a previous video where I showed you how to deploy a React application on Netlify. So instead in this video, I will go ahead with the CLI based approach. So there is also a command line interface functionality available in Netlify from where we can get things deployed directly from the terminal itself. We don't actually need a GitHub repository hosted for that. So that's the approach that we are following in this one. It's actually faster and recommended for an express application. Perfect. Now the very first thing that I already have here is an Express.js application. As you can see, this project again was already built in another video. I link it at the top here. You can also find the link in the description. We basically built a contact management Express.js application. So it contains this array or dummy array of contacts. And then there are a couple of different routes. So we have a route to get all contacts, get individual contact details, then create a new route, update and delete routes. So again, if you're wondering where this code is coming from, you can check that Express.js video out. In this one, we are only focused on deploying this to get a working API endpoint or a working URL. The very first thing that we have to do is to restructure things a little bit. So let us actually zoom in to the file and folder section here. And the first thing is to create a folder called Netlify. Within this, I'm creating another folder called functions. And within this, I'm creating a file called api.js. Now I will take the entire code from index.js. I will cut it and paste it inside the api.js and we can actually delete this index file. How do I know this? Well, this is where the documentation comes in. So if you just spend a few minutes reading this documentation, you will understand that it actually asks us to create a Netlify function file, right? And it also gives us certain other instructions, which we'll come back to in a few minutes. For now, just follow along. So again, first up, we have created the Netlify folder within which we have made another folder called functions. And inside that we have the actual JavaScript code or our Express.js code. Then we have to create another file outside here, which is the Tomel file. So this will be called Netlify.toml, T-O-M-L. Again, this is a special extension and the details are written in the documentation. You can see here, it says in the newly created file, you have to write some code and then add the following configuration in your netlify.toml file. So this is what I am trying to do now. So we have created the file. I can copy this code as it is and then go back and paste it. Now, once the code is pasted, there are a couple of changes we have to make. So first up, we have to replace this with a build and then we have to add functions and the location where our functions are written or the location of the file that we have just created. So this is the file that we actually want to deploy. So that will be something like this. So instead of that function default code, we have to replace it with the build because we want Netlify to build everything available inside this file. So we have specified that under the build method or the build instructions. So we are saying build all the functions available inside this folder. So that is where our file contains. Even if you have multiple files, this should work fine because we are going to use routing at the end of the day. So this is done. We don't need to make any further changes. So that's step two. And then step three, we have to initialize Git in this repository. Right? So let us go ahead and do that. I'll open up a new terminal and then that will be Git init. 
this will initialize the git repository and then we should be good once the repository is initiated we have to add a git ignore so again unlike react this is not automatically added for us so we have to add it manually and we have to hide two things the first thing of course is a node modules folder and the second thing is a folder called dot netlify now this is something that we will just create in the next step finally the last step that we have to do is to actually install a couple of additional packages and make some changes in the code so let me zoom out here and now let's focus on the actual code so if we head back to the documentation now there are specific instructions as you can see here so if you're using typescript then you should install this third package as well if we are only using express then the other two packages are enough so we have serverless http and netlify functions these are the two packages that we have to install so that's npm i and then i will paste those two names over here this should install everything for us and that's practically all we need then what we have to do is we have to use these packages in the code to make a few changes in the actual code let us go ahead and do that now the very first thing that we have to do is of course to require or import those packages now you will see over here i am using the import syntax and not the require syntax so again if we are to deploy this using serverless http or using the netlify settings then it is recommended that we replace our const setup with the import setup instead so in a typical express application we use this right const express is equal to require express things like this but for deploying it we have to actually use the import method or the import way done now let us go ahead and add those two imports so we have just imported serverless http so that is the first thing that we want right so we want to import serverless from serverless http so that is the first thing in addition to this we also need the router for this so we have to set this up using a router itself the normal app based routing is not sufficient to get this deployed so for this i've imported the router as well now let us go ahead and quickly make the changes that we need so first up we need a router so that's const router equal to and then we can specify the router right like so done then we have the application that is being initialized and then we have to use the body parser this is also fine after this we can actually go ahead and write our router logic so we don't need the port in this case netlify will automatically assign or allocate a port for us then the contacts can see the same the rest of this can also see the same the major changes happen at the end so we need to comment out or remove the whole listen part this is no longer required and instead of this we actually have to go ahead and write two lines of code let me quickly do that now the first one is app dot use and then we have to specify the router so we'll say slash api this will be our url endpoint for the api and then router so what that means is whenever we go to contacts or if you want to go to contacts then that will be slash api slash contacts so in the actual url that we get we have to precede everything with api done and finally the last step is to trigger or export this so we can say export and then const and then handler is equal to serverless and then http this is what we have to specify and here we can just replace this with our app itself so app dot use this router and then export this as a serverless app this is what netlify will pick up and it will automatically trigger or initiate this server done the last step that we have to do here is to replace app with router everywhere else so all our endpoints should actually become router based endpoints now and they should not be app based anymore so let's go ahead and make those changes and that's it finally we can then use the netlify cli to get this done if you don't have the cli installed again you can go to the instructions here and you will find the details for that so this is the command npm install netlify cli hyphen g this is the command i am just pasting it and running it this will install cli locally on the entire system and it is not local to the project but for the entire system so we just have to install it once now you will face this error while installing it that's why i actually highlighted this part for you what we have to do is since it's an installation thing we have to run it using sudo so sudo and then npm install it will ask you for your system password or root password and then it will install the cli package so again if you face that error make sure you run this as a sudo command and that should fix it
Perfect. Now that the installation is done, the next step again is to go ahead and initialize a Netlify project. So that's Netlify init. Let's go ahead and hit enter. At this point, if you're doing this for the very first time, it will ask you to log in to your Netlify by opening your browser. So it will redirect you to the browser, take you to the Netlify login page. You can then log in from there and then it will come back over here, right? But in my case, I've already used it before. So it is directly taking me to the next step. So now here it says yes, create and deploy manually or no, I will connect this to GitHub first. You can choose either of the approaches. I'm going to go with the manual setup. So I'll click on the first option. Yes, create and deploy manually. Then this shows us all the teams from an Netlify account. I am sticking to my current team. I only have one. And then if you have a custom URL or a site name that you want to give, you can put that in. I don't really want it. I am okay with whatever name Netlify gives us. So that is the first step. And you can see we already have a temporary URL available with us. Then it also suggests us the next step. That's Netlify deploy. So let's run that now. Netlify deploy. Make sure you also add this prod flag at the end or the production flag at the end. This will make the URL available immediately. So Netlify deploy hyphen hyphen production. Then leave the published directory empty. Just put enter and you should be good. This will then go ahead and get the actual deployment done. It could take up to two to five minutes if you're doing this for the very first time. So this could take a few minutes to get it done. But after it is done, you can see we get the URL. So now let me copy that URL. Let us open our Thunder client and actually try to hit that endpoint and see if we can actually get that data. So I've just pasted it. Remember everything must be preceded with API. So slash API slash contacts. That's the first route that we have. Let's connect to it. And you can see we get our contact data back. If you open this up in the browser, then this should also open up as a normal JSON based API. And you can see we get that API response in the browser as well. Right. So this is it. This is how you can go ahead and deploy the application. And if you go back to your Netlify account, you will actually be able to see that available in your account as well. So if I just go back to my Netlify account, that's app.netlify.com, you should be able to find the site here. You can see this is the recent one published at the current time. And that's it. This is how we can go ahead and get it done. Now, obviously, there will be no front end associated with it. So if you try to visit the website, you will get something like this page not found because it's an express application and we only have API endpoints. So make sure you hit the correct API endpoint. Right? And that's it. This is how we can deploy an express JS application and get a live URL or a working URL, which we can then put or connect to via a react based application to get this data and functionality over to the front end. If you found this video useful, do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know in the comments what is the next topic or technology that I should cover. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.